Teens notice older men walking with girl, then realize something is off. Four teenagers practice their skateboarding tricks in an underground parking lot. For them, it was just another day. Realizing that it was growing late, they knew that the fun would have to end and they would have to start heading home. But the four Canadian boys weren't expecting to see something so suspicious as they emerged from the underground of Calgary. A teenage girl, who was visibly upset, and two much older men were making their way over the grass and to the parking lot. The man seemed to be quite forceful with the girl. The men paused when they noticed the boys staring at them, but it was only when the boys noticed something else about the girl that their suspicions were aroused. One of the skateboarders, Carson Wright, recalls, she was screaming and yelling. She just wanted to be out of there. That's what made the boys stop and take notice. Growing more suspicious by the minute, they stopped to confront the men, what's going on here? The larger of the two men turned and asserted that he was the girl's father. The implication was that he'd perhaps found her drinking or something similar. So the boys, satisfied, backed off. The teenager hadn't contradicted the man, nor had she asked for help. The boys decided to let it go. But there was a nagging feeling in all of their minds that something just didn't feel right. Already later than they had planned on staying out and aware that they all had curfew set down by their parents, the boys really needed to be heading home. Packing up their skateboards and the nagging suspicion that they were missing something, they started heading back. It was easier to believe the man. After all, the girl hadn't disagreed with him. But they just couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. They tried to console themselves that the girl had obviously seemed intoxicated. They discussed it as they walked home. And the more they thought about it the more they were sure something was amiss. They wondered if they should they have backed down so quickly. Perhaps they should have asked more questions or gotten the girl's side of the story. But the man had seemed exceedingly confident, arrogant, even. None of their fathers would have treated them that way. And then, an unsettling fact dawned on them that made them question everything. Carson remembers that she looked like she had been struggling against the man, perhaps even for quite a while. She was all scuffed up and dirty, he recalled. The most unusual and upsetting thing was that the man had her slung over his shoulder like a bag of potatoes. Even then she was still trying to resist in her inebriated state. They stopped walking. Each one of them coming to the same conclusion at once. Every instinct told them to go back or they'd never forgive themselves if they didn't. The more they thought about it, the more they knew that something just wasn't right. Sometimes you can tell when seemingly innocent actions are not what they seem just by the feeling you get. This wasn't normal and they all agreed that something felt off. They had only the man's word that he was her father, nothing more. Another strange thing was what were they doing walking outside the parking lot at that hour after all the shops had closed long ago. The sinking feeling hit them all at once, there may be something darker going on here. Hurrying back, they only hoped they weren't too late. None of the boys knew for certain but Wright said, you don't want to really think of the worst in somebody like that. You don't want that situation to be real, so you just brush it off and hope for the best. It didn't take them long to get back to where they had encountered the father-daughter pair, but it was quiet and no one was around. The boys knew the whole place from their skating and knew exactly where to look if something fishy was happening. They were not happy to find the trio exactly where they looked. They had searched the parking lot, peering in between the rows of cars as they walked. Not wanting to miss a potential shadow that could be hidden in. They could be anywhere. But it was only when they searched the stairwell that they found them. The scene they had walked into was even worse than they could have ever imagined. The boys rounded the corner and were startled by what they had found. They could just make out the shapes of the men in the darkness. Their instincts told them to run, but they hadn't come back all this way for nothing. They couldn't just leave the girl to her fate, they had to do something. The four boys were disgusted and remained frozen in place by what was happening to the girl, by what the man was doing to her. Arnaud Nemenya, one of the boys, admitted that he didn't know what to do. It seemed like an eternity before they snapped out of it and that's when they leaped into action. They knew they had to separate them and just get the girl away. The men, of course, were furious. Figuring it was in their best interest to make a quick escape, the men, thwarted, tried to leave the situation altogether, wash their hands of it. Nemenya remembered that they followed them and it was then that they started getting combative. He pushed me aggressively out of the way, kinda like just gives me the smile, like, I can do this. You can't do anything about it. The man underestimated the youths. They wouldn't stand by and let him get away with it. 
the men walked away as though they had done nothing wrong. Then they turned to see three of the boys starting to chase them. One of the teens had stayed behind to watch over and comfort the shaken girl. The others had given chase. The awful adults tried to outrun them, but youth was on their side and they were catching up fast. Determined not to let the men get away with such unspeakable cruelty, the boys sprinted on through the streets of Calgar. Suddenly, they were on them. He had nowhere left to run. They had nowhere left to run and only one option left to them. The bigger man turned to face the teenagers and that's when he decided to fight. Ripping a skateboard from the nearest boy's hands he attempted to use it as a bludgeon, trying to push them back. Fighting as someone who has nothing left to lose, he tried to overcome the boys with sheer force. He didn't know that the police were only a few feet away, watching everything. Luckily the man wasn't able to do any serious harm to any of boys before the police stepped in and intervened, hauling the men away. The three teens, now with the law on their side, went back to their friend who was still sitting with the girl. The four finally went home, not knowing just how grateful the city would be for their heroic efforts that evening. Then they started getting phone calls. Too afraid to answer. They assumed that they were in trouble but they couldn't guess what for. What if they were in trouble for fighting the man? Or worse, what if the man had somehow gotten their contact details? But the calls kept coming. They knew they had to bite the bullet. They had to face the consequences of their actions. They couldn't run away forever. The teens didn't realize that their ordeal wasn't over yet. The police chief, Chief Constant Roger Chaffin, kept trying to call the boys. Unfortunately, the boys misunderstood the calls, they thought they'd get in trouble for fighting the man. In fact, he was wanting to thank them for what they'd done. Eventually, the call went through, and the boys were surprised by what the chief had to tell them. The four boys were invited to attend the chief's award gala in recognition for their services to Calgary and to the young girl they'd saved. All four agreed that it's what they hoped anyone would have done in the same situation. Next time, they'll know to trust their instincts as much as their boards. They had put their own lives at risk to save a stranger that needed them more than they ever knew. If you had found yourself in the same situation, would you have trusted your gut feeling? Or would you have walked away? Would you put your life on the line or someone you don't know? It's not an easy answer. But to that girl, their choice made all the difference. What these four teens did was an incredible act of bravery and took a lot of courage. It's not easy to stand up to an adult who seems to have authority. Who knows what would have happened to the girl if they hadn't trusted their instincts.